Hello and welcome to Solar sort of Motion View Fix. This time we'll be looking at UTPS Free and Emerald AI 2024. So let's just dive into it. This is a standard scene in UTPS, uh, the playground. I just dragged in a shooter, uh, Emerald AI shooter. This is the person over here. And uh, if we play the scene right away, he doesn't detect me. He doesn't do anything. Even if I shoot him, he doesn't take damage. Nothing happens. Go to a GPS character. Here we'll be adding an Emerald player bridge, just as described in the documentation. This will add a player bridge for you. It will also add a faction extension and a target position modifier. Go into the faction here and let's set up a faction. Just open up faction manager if you don't want to use the pre-default ones. So let's switch to player and the target position modifier. Open up your TPS character. Let's just add in the spine here, like so. Now open up your Emerald player bridge. Okay, so remember to put in the using UTPS up in the namespace. Let's go back. Then here, say game object dot get component. We want to get the U health component, this one. And what do we want to access here? We want to access the health, of course, like so. And we want to subtract health from it. And we want to use the damage amount. This means this is a dynamic amount up from here. And this means that whatever damage amount your Emerald layer is set to, that will be the damage. Instead of you entering a static number here, you will just be able to do it inside the editor. That's pretty cool. Save it. Just in case if I forgot to mention it, remember to, of course, have a nav mesh baked. Now, for the AI to actually be able to detect us, go into the Emerald detection, and then in detection layers, Let's put in player, and that's because our TBS character, he has the tag of player, and also the layer player. That's right, he's detecting us and he's uh, shooting at us. Yeah, and as you see, we are getting the uh, subtracting of health. You see that? And now we died. And if you go into your shooter AI here, go into the combat settings and look at the bullet here. Open that up, we can see that the base amount here is set to 20. So if we set it to 10 right now, and this is the damage amount I talked about before. If we set this to 10 and then go back to our TPS character, open up the health, you should see 10 subtraction for each uh, damage. There. 10 10 per times we're getting you right so that's pretty cool now how do we deal damage to the ai here well there are several ways to do it and depending on which weapon uh, you're using but now i'm gonna, just gonna go with the uh, ump weapon so it has different bullet types here so let's find the bullet here the ump weapon it's in the right hand and unlock it so here we have this weapon here and inside the weapon you open up the shooting, and you see it has this bullet. And there's different bullets. There's bullet, bullet heavy, and shotgun. So this method I'm showing you now, you can use that for implement that to the other bullet types as well. So go into the bullet itself, and then open the bullet script here. Okay, inside the bullet, remember up in the namespace, put in using Emerald AI. Now go find on collision enter, on collision enter here. And here we say if collision game object and we want the we want a component on the game object we want to see if it's an emerald ai so emerald ai and then the i damageable this one and let's see close it out like this and we want to see if it's not no like so and then we want to do something here right so the code you can actually just copy most of this already in here like so and then you will say damage here we'll say damage and uh, the emerald ai damage it takes an uh, int but the damager here the bullet is a float type so we need to convert that and you do that by putting in this int in front of 
your damager. So we put in int here and then we say bullet damage. And this bullet damage is the actual bullet damage from UGPS itself. So that means whatever the bullet damager is set to inside of the editor, that will be the one you will be uh, hitting and, and targeting with. So you don't have to put in a static number here either. So with this, we just say transform and zero. We don't want to write all force on this one. Put like this and save it. So on the UMP, we saw on the shooting, let's check bullet, it's set to 25. So we should uh, withdraw 25 health from our AI when we hit it with this bullet type. Now, if we go back to our AI, because this AI is set up with a lot of ragdoll on it, then uh, you need to have another collider. That's what I did. So I just added a capsule collider, have it around him here to ensure that I'm going to be able to hit him. Then open up the health and lock it so we can see that if he withdraws 25 every time we hit him. 25, yeah. One more. One more, yes, it works, and one more, and he's dead. Of course, there's ragdoll force on him. So that's how we kill the AIs here. Now let's go in and add our own generic character here. So I have from this Pagic, I have from this uh, asset store, heroic fantasy creatures. I'm gonna use one of the characters from there. And then go up to my Emerald AI and set up manager. Drag it in there. I just want to use enemy for the tag and enemy for the layer as well. And I want to use root motion and I want to target position modify and also the UI on him. That's okay for now, I think so. Maybe also the items events actually. Setup AI, okay. So now we have this character here. Now we basically just go in and set him up. So create a new animation profile animation profile I'm just gonna call them enemy profile save yes on top of that edit animation profile I'm gonna drag it up here and dog it up here and then we need to of course create a animator controller so once you have your animation profile what you actually just do here for the non-combat here I went in and just uh, took my all my root motion files here and just drag them into each slot here so for the idle i put in the idle weapon for the walk animation i have root motions root motions run root motion so these are just all the animation that comes with this uh, character here and of course when he get hit there's a hit here as well and then there's a diff and then i just went up and said copy the non-combat uh, animation to type 1 so I don't have to do it all again so in type 1 when he's in combat mode it's basically all the same animations but of course on the attack I set this one up there's a lot of attack uh, animation come with this character but I use this one so he's in like this now open up the animation viewer and then in the current animation choose your attack animation which was this one to hit combo weapon this and if you drag you can see over here it's gonna show when you're gonna actually hit the attack it's right about here so I'm gonna say create ability right there and say create it so now we have a create ability right around here I'm gonna say apply changes like so right around there that's good close it then go back then on the detection I want to make sure that I can detect my player and for the factions I want to make sure that I have the player as enemy and the faction itself here let's just give this another faction here maybe call it creature like so and then creature so this creature here it has its own faction and its enemy uh, faction is player so that's why it's important our player has the faction of player player. So those for those were the detection settings, the combat settings here. Let's see here. We don't need anything on these two, but on the weapon type, you go down and then you say type one attack, 
open that you only put one in your animation viewer so that's why it's gonna automatically find that one and here because he has uh, a weapon in his hands then just gonna check one of the pre-default abilities so which one if it was unarmed i will check this one but if it was throwing something it could be a grenade or if shooting then a bullet but this time he has a hand weapon so i'm gonna choose saw this one let's double click on it and if we click on saw go back to saw here we can see that the saw damage damage here has been set to five and five so whenever he hits our player he should take damage of the value of five let's go back here see what other settings combat behaviors it's good movement it's set already to root motion so we leave it like that the health we can set that to 100 and ui we want to have his ui when the player is around so enable that on the ui layers and then uh, for the health bar we want to show a health bar get that up here and let's say here use custom health bar nope let's get a little bit up you can see the red line over here that's how fire goes up so let's just around here that's perfect so that was for the ui animator's good box collider's good so everything at this point should be good let's uh, take a look but actually i want to have more damage than just five so let's go back to the saw to give it a 20 and 20 okay and then let's highlight our utps character and lock the health here so we can actually see if we are subtracting 20 from our health okay the ui gets enabled and he sees us yeah 20 yes you see that we're getting 20 subtract each time so we're definitely getting getting damage here so that's pretty cool and also bang we shot him he's dead perfect it works now some other quick tips here before we wrap up i just want to show that if you're using for example your saw which is the katana here if he uses that then uh, it uses uh, utps uses something called damager so either you can put a u health on your ais and that it will subtract for that but then you need to hook that up up to your own um, health component so they need to talk to each other but uh, this is basically like the damager here the damage here says uh, text to damage uh, the text ensure that they, you have the correct tag here uh, what we're looking for is this script u damager so if you open up the damage script and in the damage script i ensure that i we have the using emerald ai then you go down to on collision here and on the collision you will uh, put this code in here if collision game object comes to enemy so if it hits my enemy here and actually we don't need that because we're already checking here that we are hitting the emerald ai so just delete this and delete this so this is what you need if the collision game object uh, has a, a component of emerald ai but an eye damage alone if that's not null then i'm just making a debug here then what i want to do is i want to subtract damage so this damage is from the damage itself save this out so that damage value on the on the katana damage here is this value here damage so right now it's set to 30 so let's see if actually it will uh, damage uh, 30 on our creature so if we go over to our creature here and look at his health he has 100 if he loses 30 of course i have two so yeah i slashed them multiple times so of course but that's uh, the way you can deal damage uh, on with your saw Another cool tip here is for the weapon itself here on this hammer here you can uh, just create uh, an empty uh, and create a collider box on it so let's just call it hitbox and here's where the items for the AI comes in place so if we go back and then we say for the items here item settings open the plus not the weapon settings but the item settings here you'll drag in your hitbox like so and it has an id of zero so go back to your character here of your ai and then on the animations open animation viewer on 
attack then we want this enable item this one let's say we want the hitbox right here edit and remember the int is zero because we had a zero as well and let's just disable it around here so here we say disable item like so so now we have a disable item and we also have a enable item apply changes let's see here it gets enabled so that's pretty cool but what could be even cooler is that when he hits me maybe we could activate a ragdoll as well or something like that i created a little script here so for this one we say activate ragdoll and then on the ragdoll this script i will include in the in the description so here you're basically just going to go up to your character your you youtube your tps character drag that in here it's going to look at the ragdoll so basically what is so basically what i'm doing is i'm just uh, referencing the advanced ragdoll controller i call it rd i have a box collider in the start method i'm getting the i'm fetching the box collider then i use an invoke to enable the box collider after 0.3 seconds and after 0.3 seconds it's going to enable the the hitbox then on collision enter i'm saying that if I hit my box hits and game object with a with a tag called player. Then it's gonna go in and enable the ragdoll here. Let's see how that works. If he sees me, yep, ragdoll got activated. I'll go up again, and dead. It works. Okay. So thank you guys. Hope you learned something. Hope it was useful. Please leave a like. And a comment if you need to hear anything more about it. Else, uh, if you're not subscribed already, please do that. And you help out this channel a lot. Thank you, guys. Bye.